do you regret locking your hair? Ooh, that's a little breakage. Along this journey, I've been able to meet all of you. I want to see the Eiffel Tower. The most annoying experience you've had doing YouTube so far. I would say the most annoying thing so far. I want all three. Ooh, Ashley. Hey, ooh, Ashley. Hey. Hey y'all, it's your girl Shay Shay back with another video. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ashley. As you can see by the title of today's video, I'm going to be doing my very first ever q a on my youtube channel i'm so excited to be doing a type of video like this because i've never done anything like this a few of y'all did ask me some questions on instagram i had a poll on there so go ahead follow me on instagram check that out because i might be doing stuff like that in the near future i might be putting polls up if y'all ever want to ask me anything i did put a poll up on instagram i asked y'all to ask me some questions and i also did in the community post on youtube so if you did ask a question thank you so much it will be answered in this video so i'm also also going to be taking down my passion twist I literally have had these up for less than two weeks um I miss my locks honestly I'm feeling a lot of tension on my scalp if we're being honest and also I get tired of my hair really quick I decided to cut them because I just wanted them to be short instead of long I like the short passion twist I think they look really good on me I'm just kind of done with them and I don't want to damage my locks or anything like that if this is your first time seeing me my name is Ashley and I do try to post videos once a week but you know I post this often as I can on this channel. I would love it if you gave this video a thumbs up and also subscribe down below to join the family and without further ado, let's hop into the video. So I'm not even gonna lie, my hair, it feels like my hair has been being pulled on on this middle part. Like it just feels like there's a lot of tension on my scalp. To be honest with you, I didn't take the best care of my hair like before I did this. I just kind of did these passion twists very impulsively. I didn't retwist my hair first so my hair is definitely matting up at the roots. Um, This is the oil I'm using it is the jamaican mango and lime jamaican mango and lime jamaican mango and lime i jamaican mango and lime island oil this stuff is absolutely amazing it smells amazing and it's supposed to be for locks says that it strengthens your locks no build up it moisturizes the scalp nourishes roots to ends this stuff is amazing it is the only oil i have been able to find so far on my lock drainer that does not cause my scalp to like itch after but before i go ahead and ramble on let me get into some of these questions i'm gonna put my hair up and get into the questions Okay, so the first question is by ja girl underscore vendetta. You asked, was it hard washing the hair paint wax out of your hair? Can you give a full feedback on your experience with the wax, residue, vibrancy, vibrancy of color, washing it out, etc.? So if you don't know, a couple months into my lock journey, I did use red hair paint wax. I will insert the video of me doing all that like up in the cards and everything. So basically I applied this red hair paint wax to my hair. Honestly, when I first applied it, the consistency was very weird and thick and it had like this men's cologne type of smell it was really easy to work with but the color looked a little bit different like i got red hair paint wax but like when i was putting it on my hair it literally looked pink honestly i just wasn't really feeling it at first it was very patchy it looked kind of disgusting when i put it on some areas were clumpy and i was putting it on like in a very lazy fashion like i wasn't really taking it seriously because i was like i don't even know how this is gonna look i don't know if it's gonna look good or not i basically was like you know what i want to get a little bit of a change to my locks i know this is only gonna be like a couple days thing so i went ahead and did it as i was like applying it it started to get better and better i was like okay i'm starting to like this a little bit more the color got a little bit more vibrant it started to grow on me a little bit eventually when i finished like applying it to my hair i was in love i was in love with that hair paint wax that is literally what led me to dye my hair red permanently in the first place my hair is no longer red i got rid of it a couple literally just a couple weeks ago i really wish that i wouldn't have but that hair paint wax literally led me to dye my hair red so if you're thinking about like dyeing your hair if you have locks or if you're thinking about like just switching up your style for a couple days go ahead and get some hair paint wax like i completely recommend it it's really safe for locks and it was pretty easy to get it out of my hair what i ended up doing was a detox a lock detox i also have a video on that which i will link somewhere for you guys if you want to check that out the lock detox is basically how i got the hair paint wax out of my hair that is not to say that you need to use a lock detox to get like hair paint wax out of your hair it is not that serious 
serious. You literally just wash it out with shampoo and conditioner. You're probably gonna be rinsing it out for a minute because locks do trap in literally everything. Like you will be fine. Like hair paint wax comes out super easily. It is not meant to like damage your hair. It literally just puts color on top of your hair. The color sits on top. You do not have to be extra and use a lock detox. It was just, I think it was like my six month mark. So I was like, I actually would like to do a lock detox anyway because my locks need a detox. So that's basically why I use the lock detox. But honestly, the color payoff was absolutely amazing. There was a little bit of like transfer onto my like clothes and pillows and stuff, but it was like flaking. It wasn't anything that like stained it just because it wasn't permanent dye. It wasn't even semi-permanent dye. So if you do get it on anything, it comes right off. I did get it kind of everywhere, but like it didn't stain anything. It didn't ruin any of my clothes any of my sheets or pillows like it was a very pretty and very temporary color I only left it in for about three days just because you don't want to like clog up your locks for too long as y'all can see I'm having some trouble with this lock like the passion toys kind of got stuck on it a little bit and I pulled it down and honestly I remember the last time I did passion twist whenever I like slid it down my lock when it wasn't like fully unraveled that kind of condensed my lock a little bit like that is not good so make sure if you you are removing your passion twist that you fully unbraid and untwist this seems to be like stuck on my hair though so I don't know what to do and I can't pull it down anyway even if I wanted to because it's stuck I just want to show y'all like how thin my lock is back here I had a problem with this one because originally I was trying to install bow locks and I like crocheted it into my hair and looped it and it literally like tore my lock apart so my lock is very much like thin right here it's it's not because of the passion twist. Protective styles are very iffy when it comes to locks, so just be careful when you're doing them. Just be as gentle as you possibly can because it can definitely thin out your roots. I didn't even keep these in for two weeks because the passion twist hair will try to fuse in with your lock because it's already trying to do that and I'm only two locks in. All right, y'all, so I have made a little bit of progress. I'm not gonna lie, my locks seem to be a tiny bit thin, if I'm being honest. Um, some of them are pretty thick, some are just a little thin, but moving on to the next question. So, Melissa Evans said, do you regret locking your hair? The answer is no, 100% no. I honestly think it is the best decision I have ever made. I feel like my lock journey allowed me to like connect deeper with myself. Also, it made doing my hair that much easier, okay? It was really hard in the beginning. It was so hard in the beginning. I hated how my hair looked. It was so thin, it was so stringy. It was not like thick or full or anything. So the beginning was definitely very hard, but now that I'm like a year plus in, almost a year and a month in, I'm happy. It's so easy to do do my natural hair now. It takes me like 15 minutes to wash my hair. It does take a little minute to retwist. Doing styles like this are a little bit more difficult now, but honestly, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like I feel like just surrendering my hair to the universe has really just allowed me to just take a step back, relax, and just not like worry too much about my hair. I love my lock journey. It's allowed me to actually like fall in love with my natural hair in ways that I wasn't able to before. Don't get me wrong, I did love my loose natural natural hair but I had it for about five years I grew to love my afro I grew to love my curls and my 4c texture but locking my hair has honestly been the best decision I have ever made for my hair and if any of you are thinking about like starting a lock journey I 100% recommend that you start your lock journey okay there are a lot of things that you do need to consider before starting it's like a lot easier to just take care of my hair like I feel like my hair is going to get so long I'm gonna see my hair get longer than I've ever seen it. Also, I've been playing around in color, which is something that I've always wanted to do. Is that damaging my hair? Probably. I mean, I'm gonna say yes. I don't know if it's visibly damaging my hair. It could be because I'm like, my hair is a little bit thin. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I said, all in all, like it has definitely been like one of the best decisions I have ever made. I am gonna show y'all like what my hair is looking like. So some of my locks are still pretty nice and thick, but some of them are just very much, um, yeah, I made like a significant amount of progress. Some of my locks are just thinner than others. Like as you can see, this is like, my lock is non-existent. Like 
the root at least so okay so next question rise up pro asked what are your favorite lock styles i would definitely have to say that barrel twist is 100 percent like no questions asked my favorite style to do i really love to do like the five barrel twist going back like i'll enter the picture for y'all like on multiple occasions different hair colors girl like girls and boys you know like i love me some barrel twists i feel like it's a good way to get my hair out of my face i can leave the tendrils down if i want to but like barrel twist really just took my lock game to a whole new level i feel like that is like the turning point of my lock journey where i started wearing my hair out so much more i started wearing my locks out a lot more when i discovered the barrel twist it really just gave me a lot of confidence i just love how they look on my hair they're kind of like braids almost they're super easy to do i do them myself like i do everything with my hair by myself so they're super easy they look good you know i can keep them in for a little bit they keep my retwist looking fresh for a couple weeks so another one of my favorite styles two little ponytails i do like two ponytails or two buns my hair isn't really long enough to do one ponytail or one bun even in the front section yet so two little buns or two little ponytails is definitely another go-to that i like to do when i don't have my barrel twist in that's not something that i always want in my hair so yeah two little buns and two ponytails also the barrel twists are like definitely my favorite go-to lock styles into the next question so this person camille davis she actually asked me a couple of different questions i'm gonna read the whole thing and then like kind of answer each question she said do you feel like you've changed or grown as a person since starting your lock journey what's been your favorite month of the lock journey and non-lock related what are you listening to favorite artists slash songs have a great holiday weekend you too girl have a great holiday weekend i'm just gonna answer them in order so she basically asked me first do i feel like i've changed or grown as a person since starting my log journey the answer to that is 100 percent yes okay it has been a year and a month since i started my log journey and even if i were not to have started my log journey that is a lot of time and i've definitely grown as a person i've definitely matured i've definitely lost a lot of people in my life i've definitely gained a lot of people in my life and i felt like my log journey was honestly a really spiritual experience for me as soon as i started my log journey i lost some of the closest people in my life but it was a point of reflection if that makes sense so it basically now that i've been able to reflect on the situation i reflected on those relationships and i realized that like those people were not meant to be in my life those people did not have my best interests at heart and i feel that my log journey really just allowed me to like make those decisions or for those things to happen i feel like it was divine timing the universe was like okay you're starting your locks and all of these things are gonna happen right after i lost those two people i got a new job i was able to quit the job that I absolutely hated like just a lot started looking up for me it's when I started posting more consistently on YouTube it's when my YouTube channel started to grow a lot because I started my log journey so honestly like starting my log journey has been literally one of the best things that has ever happened to me like along this journey I've been able to meet all of you I've been able to talk to all of you build this community here on YouTube so it's been like a huge blessing and I've definitely changed a lot as a person you can go back and watch some of my older youtube videos and see like how much i have grown and blossomed just like visually the way that i look for one and the way that i carry myself and the way that i even edit my videos and stuff so i've definitely evolved i've definitely grown i've definitely stepped closer to my higher self and i think i owe my log journey for that and all of you guys as well you know sticking around and just supporting me because you guys give me motivation to keep going not necessarily with my log journey because that was something that i plan to do on my own but with this youtube thing and i know that i'm helping so many of you posting all of my lock updates and videos like this so just thank you so much for supporting me my lock journey has literally been like one of the best growth experiences i've had so far the next question is what was my favorite month my favorite month by far has to be month 10. so month 10 is when i really just stepped out month 10 is when i stopped wearing the wigs it's when i dyed my hair i think like right before like month 10 happened i discovered barrel twist i started wearing my hair out every day since then i 
have not worn a wig. Since I discovered Barrel Twist, this passion twist style is the first time I've like covered up my lock since I dyed my hair and also since I started doing Barrel Twist in my hair. Like I love, love, love month 10. Red hair suits me so well. Honestly, I am very sad that I got rid of it because it's like, I would love to have that red hair back, but honestly, I'm not trying to damage my hair any further if I do. And she also asks, what am I listening to? My favorite artist slash song. So this is definitely a different topic on my channel. I've never really talked about anything like this. My music taste is all over the place, okay? I listen to a lot of artists right now and honestly, I don't know what it is, but I feel like lately I've been like healing my inner child. When I was in middle school, I was like heavy into like rock music. Like, I mean, screaming in my ear, drums in the background, electric guitars going off. Like, I really do love rock music. So a band that I really love right now is called Dance Gavin Dance, a throwback, Pierce the Veil is really nice, Falling in Reverse. But my music taste is literally all over the place i love me some drake i like trippy red i really love kehlani SZA. like when i tell you my music taste is all over the place i go from like rock music to like r&b music so i do have different playlists i have my rock playlist and then i have my r&b playlist so i like to mix it up and switch it up depending on my mood but definitely lately a lot of what i've been listening to is my rock music like literally i think of it as healing my inner child like i said this lock journey is very much a spiritual one and the fact that I've like hit a year I feel like has definitely made a turning point in my life so all right so the next question is from I am so sorry if I pronounce your name wrong Ali Ali so she asked have you ever thought about traveling what countries would you love to visit and why so this is a really interesting question I've always wanted to travel to some of the countries in Africa just because I know that is where my roots that is where my roots lie my ancestors that I have never met that my parents parents have never met were once in Africa. We all originated from there. Visiting some of those countries would literally just bring me back to my roots and I would get to just experience like where I'm from, like where I really originate and come from. Some of the countries in Africa that I really would like to visit are Nigeria, also Ghana. That's definitely like one of the countries, one of the places, one of the continents on my bucket list to travel to. The next place I would really love to travel is Paris. Like I want to go to France. I want to see the Eiffel Tower. One thing about me, since I was a kid, I've always had like this fixation on the Eiffel Tower. Why? I like I don't know, but like I've always been like so interested in the Eiffel Tower. I was like one day I'm going to go travel to France so I can see the Eiffel Tower. Like I'm going to Paris. My whole bathroom setup has Eiffel Towers everywhere, like Eiffel Tower sheets. I even had like a whole Paris like themed bedspread. I even have a real picture of the Eiffel Tower from when my godmom went to Paris. She printed out like a large copy of the Eiffel Tower. I will literally insert a picture here for y'all to see. One thing about me, I love croissants. Ah! Stop! I could have dropped my croissant! I love bread period, but croissants? Croissants are like my favorite type of bread, okay? Like croissants have a soft spot in my heart and to get like a real French croissants that is like a dream come true so france is definitely just one of those places that i just have to go the last place on my list i would love to go to jamaica like i feel like just the tropical islands just being around people that look like me with locks like just a beautiful environment beautiful tropical environment i feel like jamaica would be an amazing place to travel just because it's so beautiful i would meet so many new people like i think that jamaica is definitely one of the just a really beautiful place to visit and that's kind of just why I would like to visit Jamaica as well. Okay, next question. So BamTime underscore ag, the most annoying experience you've had doing YouTube so far. Honestly, I've had a lot of positive experiences doing YouTube. Like I rarely get people like hating on me. I really get like people, you know, being rude or anything. I do get like rude comments here and there, but that's not even the most like annoying part. I was kind of gonna like say something like that, but something just popped into my head. I I would say the most annoying thing so far that I have experienced is like every time I promote my videos on like Instagram or something there's like a bunch of people in my DMs talking about oh promote it here promote it there I'm a digital marketer I can help you out it's just like all these people trying to scam me into like buying their services so I can grow my YouTube channel like telling me that my, my score is low and all this stuff and I'm just like 
I'm doing this organically on my own. My subscribers love me for me. Like I don't need to buy followers. Like I will put in the work and grow organically. There is no reason for me to do that. No shade to anybody who does, but like that's just not how I roll. And I'm not gonna pay someone to give me followers. Like that just makes no sense. Like this is just one of my hobbies. I am not looking for followers. I genuinely just wanted to document my log journey and y'all just stick around with me. Like, and I love y'all so much for doing that, but it's like, I'm not gonna sit here and pay for followers because what's the point but yeah i mean just other than that like i kind of mentioned before people will you know say what they have to say about you people will be rude people will have their opinions people will put on their phd hats in your comments i feel like that does get a little bit annoying it's like honestly in all of my videos i let people know i am not a professional this is not my advice this is just what i am doing straight up i'm just a girl who don't know what's going on most of the time like i just be doing stuff and recording it because I know y'all would like to see it but it's like don't do what I do or don't get upset about like the decisions that I make you know because it's like it really just doesn't have anything to do with you but like I am putting it on the internet so that is definitely something that you're gonna have to deal with people are gonna have an opinion about you and you just have to have thick skin so that's one thing I've learned honestly if you don't like a comment lock it report it or say something back if you really have to all right y'all so basically what I'm gonna do now is work my way up you know get my most of these done and I'm gonna come back to y'all with the final question I did save this one for last like on purpose because it relates to like me taking down my hair and everything so you will see what that question is and why I saved it to the end all right y'all so I have made it to this last little section of my hair basically I kept my lock jewelry on so I just want to take out one of those while I answer this next question just to show y'all that like I kind of just braided around it the last and final question is do you regret installing passion twist over your locks any obvious damage slash stress and this was by shaylee 1205 i don't regret installing my passion twist throughout my lock journey like i said i'm about a year and a month right now this is my second time installing passion twist the first time i installed them was at my six month mark and i was really careful with it i experienced like the tiniest 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 bit of thinning like visibly my hair did look a little bit more thin honestly it wasn't much with this time around i'm not gonna say that it's the passion twist but in the back my hair is very much thin my locks in the front have always been a lot thicker a lot more healthy i guess but the back for some reason is just extremely thin i don't know why but it just is it can thin your locks out a tiny little bit so if you already have like thinner locks or if you have very fragile hair doing a style like this may not be the best um thing for you my hair can take a lot like i've done a lot to my hair and it's still like pretty healthy decently healthy my hair can take it you know i wouldn't do this style often or anything like that just because i do not want to damage my hair if i did this too often it would definitely like damage my hair and thin out my roots and i'd be bald headed my locks would literally snap i wish i would have done a different color that's the only thing i guess i regret about it i like the color that i did i just wish i would have did something a tiny bit lighter just so it could like balance off my skin tone a little differently not that this color like bounced off my skin tone bad I think it looked really good to be honest and it covered up this atrocious color other than that like I do not regret doing the passion twist but I have noticed a tiny little bit of thinning when I tell you the intense burn I'm feeling in my arm is really just not funny like <laughs> It's just not. Anybody with natural hair or hair period who's just in their hair for a minute, you know. You know what pain I'm talking about right now. I think this is my hair. Ooh, that's a little breakage. Yeah, that's some breakage right there. That is not cute. This color is nasty. This blue looks like trashy. I think I just have really strong like hair. Like, like I said, some of them in the back are pretty thin, especially that one that I had showed y'all. The one that was a little, like, <laughs> that was struggling, basically, because it got cut up a little bit. But the rest of my hair pretty much is doing well. My lock jewelry is still in. I'm looking like cheap cake right now, to be right, something like that. But all right, y'all, you have made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you have made it here, please comment down below this emoji. Like I said, you are everyone for watching all the way through. Thank y'all so much once again for asking these questions. I really enjoyed doing this video. I was a little choppy, a little all over the place because this was my first Q&A, but I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up and I'll 
also subscribe down below to join the family and without further ado i'll see you in the next one bye Ooh, yeah.